Previously in Let's Play Mega Man X2. Ninja Vanish! Ninja Vanish! Ninja Vanish! Ninja Vanish! Hello there! Oh! And now for the continuation. Salutations everyone, welcome back to Let's Play Mega Man X2. So now we got the final Maverick to go after, Crystal Snail. That's right, Crystal Snail. And yeah, basically, this is the ice ability that you're gonna get from him. It's, well, it's not really an ice ability, it's more like crystals, basically. But you get to freeze enemies with it anyways, and his stage does have ice in it. And yeah, we're in a cave with a bunch of crystals, so... But, the first thing you want to do is grab this, uh, Rhydon mech, because we want to get the hardest part container there is, and surprisingly, when I was getting this, I got this on my first try. You saw that there! I got it on my first try with the recording! Holy moly! Do you know how hard that thing is? I thought I was gonna have a failed compilation. I tried to practice run so many times, and I could not get that thing until eventually I did get it, but I was so happy I'm jumping up and down like here. Yes, that is the hardest heart container to ever get. You have to use the ride-on mech to basically fly across that thing to a certain point, jump off, and hopefully grab the edge of the wall to jump up there and get that heart container. It is very hard, and I got on my first try trying to record this. I could not believe it. Oh. <sighs> Anyways, yes, you continue to move forward, you gotta break all this, like, crystal, like, stuff out of the way, I don't know if this is ice, but, yeah, after getting over here and breaking all that ice and getting this one up, there's only one thing to do, and that's basically move forward, so I jump out of the thing and go up the wall, so, there we go, and eventually we're gonna come up to a boss here that is pretty much the easiest mini-boss ever, just take an intentional hit, get behind him, and yeah, just use Wheel Gator's ability here, Spin Wheel, to basically do a bunch of damage to this guy. Yeah, you got that annoying, uh, drawing thing, or whatever, shooting lasers at you, but if you just keep putting a bunch of wheels into that thing, yeah, that thing is gonna just die easily. There, I tried to jump up there, but I missed, but yeah, there was some energy up there. And, but, if you jump down here, you get the final area where there is a capsule for X to get. That's right, this is the final capsule, this is the helmet piece, and what does the helmet piece do? Well, essentially what it does, it makes you see hidden areas or special secret areas that are in the, uh, basically any level. So yeah, it's a radar of some sort. You wonder how I was able to find some of these hidden areas before? Well, it's because of this thing. Does it matter if you get this uh, thing or not? No, it really doesn't. If you know where all the secrets are, it doesn't matter if you get the headpiece or not. And yeah, basically that's how I was able to know where all the secrets are. And that's how it works. Essentially what you're supposed to do with uh, the headpiece is go around and basically use the radar to basically find all the hidden areas and stuff. As you can see, it's right there in the menu, that's how you select it, that's how you're able to use it, so... Yeah, that's how I knew where all the secrets were. But as you can see, it's basically the completion of the armor, so yeah, we got this, like, wonderful helmet piece. Honestly, I like the look of it, and that's about all I like about it. Really, for the most part, I think it's probably the most useless, like, helmet piece ever. But in this area here, basically what you can do is pull a bunch of, like, energy things. Kind of like in a bubble crab stage where you can pull a bunch of like life up things. That's a bunch of weapon energy. For the purpose of it, I really don't get the purpose of it. I, I honestly don't. If you want to go through the stage and use a bunch of weapon energy, except for like silk shot, you can. But what you want to do is get that thing to trigger to go down and then go up here, let that thing fall down, and yeah, now you can continue along the way with that thing out of the way, basically. So there you go. And yeah, I got all these bats on me. But, really, for the most part, this is pretty much the end of the stage right here, and all we have left to do is, uh, well, go after Crystal Snail. As you can see, there's another one of those things, but well, that's easy to get by, so no big deal. And, yeah, we're at Crystal Snail. And Crystal Snail is weak to, uh, Magna Centipede's weapon. So, yeah, get that ready and get going. So, alright, what do we got here? Yeah, a snail for some reason? What, does he have the ability to slow people down? Well, actually, yes, he does. Yes, Crystal Snail is the slowest Maverick in this game, but he has the ability to slow down people anytime he wants. As you can see when he's doing that, whoa, jeez. Yeah, and that's, that's the other thing about him. When he uh, starts uh, 
or when you start firing at him, he'll actually, like, you know, duck into his, uh, thing and whatnot. But anytime you hit him with his weakness, he flies out of his shell, he tries to go back to it. Yeah, it's a real pain in the butt to hit him sometimes. He's not really that hard, but, yeah, anytime you, like, you shoot him, he'll basically, like, fly out of his, uh, shell, and, like, then he'll try to, like, slow down time. That's basically what he's doing there, is trying to slow... Yeah, see, that's what happens when you get time slowed down. And as you can see, he's still moving normal speed and whatnot, and that's what his, like, charge-up ability does. And when you use his weapon and you charge it up, that's what it does. It's basically probably the most useless, like, charge-up ability there is in the game, but... If you can get him into, like, a good pattern, basically you can keep hitting him out of his shell. And yeah, hitting him uh, with his weakness does damage, and him flying out of his shell hit, and him hitting the wall does damage. That's why I was able to destroy him there, so... But there we go, that was all the Mavericks, and yeah, what do we get for defeating uh, Crystal Snail? Well, obviously we get an ability that we can go back to Morph Moth stage and get the final heart container, basically. So, what do we get? We get... Crystal Hunter, which basically freezes enemies, and you'll see pretty uh, pretty soon. But first, we have to talk to uh, Dr. Kane. What's up, Dr. Kane? Oh, you have? That's great. Where are they at? Grid locations. The North Pole? Oh, come on! They're with Santa Claus up in the North Pole? Are you kidding me? What in the world? Hey, let's have a base up in the North Pole. Out of all real, uh, realistic uh, sense, it actually makes sense. Have a base at the North Pole? <laughs> I guess kind of makes sense. I mean, who else is going to travel to the North Pole? But when you're in an age of, like, stage where there's robots around, what's the purpose? But yeah, that's the base right there. That's the final areas. But first, we're going back to Morph Moth's uh, stage. Because, yeah, we can get the final heart container, guys. Yes, the final heart container. So all you want to do when you get to, uh, get to the final heart container... Oh, well, gee, you don't want to destroy that guy, but basically you want to use the crystal ability. It freezes the enemy, and yeah, you just go up here, and the heart container is right here. So there we go, guys. We got the final heart container. That's every single thing in every single stage. So guys, we got everything. We got all the capsules. Guys, I'll see you on the next episode when we finally take down the X-Hunters and go after their base. So until then, guys, you guys take care. I'll see you on the next one.